Carboxylic acids are not called acids for nothing. Uh, when dissolved in water, they dissociate to give hydrogen ions. They are weak acids, uh, and this means that only a small proportion of the acid molecules dissociate into ions. So most molecules, most acid molecules remain undissociated. Uh, you may, rem may remember that another way of saying this is that the dissociation equilibrium lies far to the left. And this is indicated by the fact that the value of Ka is much less than 1. However, weak acids are still acids, and this acidity is easily detected by litmus paper or an acid-base indicator. Uh, this is an easy way to test whether an unknown compound has an acid functional group. You simply test what its pH is. Uh, now, there are many common organic acids um, that you encounter in everyday life. Um, one is methanoic acid, which uh, the old name is formic acid, and this is the chemical in ant bites. This is what ants inject into you and what uh, causes some pain. Another is ethanoic acid, otherwise known as acetic acid. This is the acid in vinegar, so possibly the most well-known organic acid. Butanoic acid used to be called butyric acid, and the word butyric is derived from the word butter uh, because it is found in rancid butter. Uh, and butyric acid actually has a pretty foul smell. Another acid is ethandioic acid, uh, otherwise known as oxalic acid. Um, this acid is found in rhubarb leaves and uh, in a lot of uh, green leafy plants. Um, it, uh, the human body can deal with a certain amount of oxalic acid, but it becomes poisonous at higher doses because it precipitates with calcium ions to give calcium oxalate, which is the cause of kidney stones. Um, so this is why we don't eat rhubarb leaves, although the stem, which doesn't contain any oxalic acid, uh, is delicious. Um, we mentioned previously that the carboxylic acids are soluble up to pentanoic acid. And this means that longer acids, octanoic acid, say, or dodecanoic acid with 12 carbons, are essentially insoluble in water. So say you have an insoluble compound, an unknown and you want to test whether it has an acid group. Acid-base indicators only work when the acid is dissolved in water, so how can you perform this test? Well, since carboxylic acids are acids, they undergo the same generic reactions that other acids do. For instance, when they're added to a base, they react to form a salt and water. So here's a carboxylic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. Uh, the hydrogen is removed from the acid and it reacts with the hydroxide, and the sodium hydroxide, to give water. The salt that forms is made from the carboxylic acid anion and the remaining sodium cation. And this salt remains permanently dissociated in water. That's why I've written it here as the two separate ions. This means that the oxygen, this oxygen here, has a permanent negative charge on it. And that means that that group there is very polar. So the original carboxylic acid group here is quite polar. But remove the hydrogen ion and uh, gain this permanent negative charge and it becomes exceedingly polar. And our R group here, recall, this is the carbon chain. This is non-polar. As an ordinary carboxylic acid, the nonpolar chain for long chains, uh, the nonpolarity of that chain outweighs the polarity of the acid group, and so the molecule is insoluble. But remove the hydrogen ion and produce this permanent negative charge on the oxygen, and now the polarity of the carboxylic acid um, part of the molecule outweighs the nonpolarity of the carbon chain. And that means that the salt of a carboxylic acid is actually much more soluble than the original carboxylic acid. This leads to a useful test for longer carboxylic acids. You try dissolving them in water, and if, you, if they don't, you try dissolving them in one or two molar sodium hydroxide solution. If they do dissolve in the sodium hydroxide, you know you have an acid, because no other organic functional group will react with sodium hydroxide in this way. There are several other generic acid reactions that carboxylic acids undergo, such as the one with metals and the one with carbonates. Um, you don't need to know these in depth or in any more depth than you already know them, but we will have a bit of a play with them in the prac this week.